I think the Mustang gods are mad at me that I just bought a Camaro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark. That right there, that is my 2018 Camaro SS1 LE. Now, I've owned that thing for about a month now, and I wanted to go over the experience I've had with it, the good and the bad. All right, so let's talk about the one thing that everybody complains about the Camaro. It has to do with the blind spots. And what it basically is, is that you can't see really behind you. I'll show you when I get inside the car in a minute. But if you look at the door here, the door is very tall due to safety standards now. And the roof is kind of short, so your window is only this big. And like, look at the rear window. Like, it's almost not a window. It's, it's the size of my hand. Since I do autocross and stuff, you have to have a helmet when you drive, and I usually keep it in my driver's seat there when I'm not driving. But the downside to the small windows is now my helmet does not fit through the window itself, and I have to open the door every time I want to grab my helmet out of the car now, or if I want to put it in the driver's seat while I'm waiting. Let's talk about the seats in this car. Now, the way that they're designed is there's supposed to be able to fold them forward so the passengers can get in the back. I have my dog Moose, he's with me 90% of the time. So when I go to let him in, you just pull this little latch and it folds forward. But I feel the downside is that there might be too much material there. Like, see how it springs back? It, it's actually an effort to push this forward and it just goes back to where it wants to go. Well, that actually kind of stayed there. And then the other thing is the seat belt. The way it's mounted, it's in the way. So if Moose wants to get in and out the back, I have to hold it up now instead of you know mounting it back here like it was in the Mustang so people can get in and out easily. So the doors on here are pretty long. I like how they looked. It's actually pretty good. Like with the door open, that's quite an opening to get in and out. But in normal circumstances, like in a parking lot or in a garage, let's say we can open the door to the first right there. So doors open first click that's actually quite a big area to get in and out of I've learned I've had to get in and out of the car a little bit differently uh, the seat bolstering there you can't you know slide in and out like you usually do I now have to get in butt first and then move my feet in which is a little bit more work I'm used to it now and getting out I can't just really slide my legs out too easily I'm a little I'm not as flexible as I used to be I'm getting old but if I put my hand on the bottom of the seal, I can get it out. It's not too bad. Now, because of how tall the bolstering is on the side of the seat, I'm pretty sure that this is gonna get wore out sometime in the future. You know, it's if you look at it, it's already got like creases in the leather a little bit. I don't really like that. The other side's just fine, but it's probably from getting in and out all the time. And you kind of gotta sit on it just a little bit. I try not to, but it still happens. All right, we're in the car now. Say you're driving down the road and we need to look. So we look back here, and that's about all you can see. You can just see that tiny little window. You can't really see back over there. I think they could have made the back window a little bit bigger. Or even if anything on the mirrors, we don't even have wide angle mirrors on there. Like for example, on the Mustang, you can see I got the little wide angle mirrors on there. That's probably something they could have put on here, make it a little bit better. Or even put blind spot sensors. That's something you gotta get as an option on like the 2SS. I don't know why that isn't a standard option in a car that you really can't see out of. And as you can see in the mirror, that's not a huge back window to see out of, but you can see behind you as you're driving. No, it's not a giant fishbowl where you can see everything, but you can see if there's a car behind you and that's all that really matters. All right, now one of the weird designs I found in this car has to do with the infotainment system. Now, if you look at the screen right here, it's actually like folded like towards you and is actually aimed down. I don't know the reasoning for that, but you now when you're driving down the road, it looks it looks okay, but it just looks weird that it's this way. I don't know if they were trying to do that to prevent glare or anything like that. It seems to work. It just looks kind of odd to me that it's tilted down when you look at it. So something else I find a little odd on the car has to do with the center console here. So if you look, it's got nice stitching and whatnot, but the way that it's shaped, this has like a piece that sticks out really far. So when you open it up, like it's almost as tall as the headrest there. And it makes it, as I said a little bit earlier, I don't have the physical range that I used to. So when I want to close it, it's kind of an awkward position to close this thing you know put it back down the way it is i like the way it looks but when you open it it is a little bit more difficult to close now here's a cool feature i use a bunch um it has to do with the little flappy paddles on the side here i don't know why camaro decided to have a flappy paddle on this stick but i got flappy paddles on both sides i'm guessing these are the flappy paddles to shift gears if you're in the automatic but in a stick they are the rev match so what you can do is you can pull on them 
and will turn red batch on and off. And so as you're driving around and you shift down a gear, it will actually rev the engine up for you to the perfect RPM so you go in nice and buttery smooth. I really like it. Um, the only downside I've had so far is if you're coming up to a stoplight, let's say we're in third gear and I like to come up and do the little like, all right, I'm in neutral when I park, but when you go over, it will rev the engine up. So it makes it seem more like I accidentally revved my engine at somebody. Now, here's a feature I really like on the car. It has to do with this little button right there. That little chrome button, what it does is that locks and unlocks the car as long as the key is close enough. See, I can lock and unlock the car. I don't have to pull anything out. Oh, this lock. There you go, unlock. See, it worked. So, just like the button that you have on the door to unlock it and lock it, there's another secret button here in the back. So, if we go to the back of the car here and right underneath where the license plate is, there's a little secret button. You can push it. As long as the key's close enough, it will pop the trunk. Which leads me to something I really don't like about the trunk. Look at the size of that thing. That is a tiny hole. The car is this wide, but the hole is this wide. And if you look inside the trunk too, there's little walls built on the side. So literally the size of the trunk is the width of the hole and the hole is, it's kind of not that big. Like, here's the backpack. If I wanted to, like there you go as a reference backpack standing up it is a hard backpack but the hole is pretty small i think they could have made it bigger at least don't build the walls in there give you a little bit of extra room for trunk space i know it's a sports car i know everybody's gonna say that but i feel that there's enough room here to give you a full-size trunk it is a decently deep trunk so that part's not too bad it just has to do with the width of it now here's a feature i think is a little bit more gimmicky i don't know if i really actually would ever use this in real life but with your key fob if you click it twice and hold the button look all my windows go down i think the feature is neat it's something i don't really use all the time but i did have a problem with the bmw when it had it is i lived in an apartment complex and when i would lean i keep my keys in my pocket so i would lean on something and it would push the button and it would roll my windows down now since there's no button to roll the window back up i would have to go outside and walk all the way around my building get in my car turn the car on or at least you know turn in accessory mode just to roll my windows up i should have a button on the key fob to roll it up if i can roll them back down now one thing i found really interesting about this car it has to do with the gears in it i don't know why but the gears are really tall i don't know if it, that's the way it is with all chevys or if it's just camaros but like when i'm out doing autocross in the mustang i'm generally in second gear doing the whole thing and this one i'm in first gear you can do almost 50 miles an hour in first gear in this car now driving the camaro around is really good um, there is one kind of annoying thing that it has in there it has this thing called the one to four shift and it's for fuel economy and what it does is it locks second gear out so that you can't put it in second gear so it literally will go from first to fourth gear i find it more of an annoyance especially like if i'm kind of going up in a grade or something like that i will go first and i'll try to go to fourth and it seems like that it, it puts it in a gear where it kind of lugs and i I think that I should have the choice to put it in second gear, or at least have the choice to turn it off. I haven't been able to find a way to turn that off yet. Now, one of the upsides of this car is actually the fuel economy. For having a 6.2 liter V8 in it, it does pretty well. So I took it for a little drive down to Carson City and back just to see what kind of fuel economy I can get. And the best I could do so far was 28.5 miles a gallon. Uh, when I did purchase this thing, it did have 31 in it. So maybe one day when I take a long trip, I'll be able to get something a little better like that. But on average driving around town, it's somewhere around the 19 to 20 mile an hour range, which is actually better than the Mustang. So I'm not gonna complain that much about it. Let's start talking about the things I found wrong with the car personally as a car itself, not as a Camaro. Uh, if we look at the hood vent right here, I do have an issue with this not being down all the way. I will have to pop the hood and remove the cover to see what's supposed to secure that. That's more of a little personal issue. The other issue I've had is over here on the driver door handle you can see right there there was damage at one time and somebody is you know they painted over it so it looks a little bit better but it does need to be cleaned up to make it look nicer 
Now, those two issues are the only real issues I've run into on this car. Not a big deal, just a quick little fix as soon as I tear some stuff apart and look at it, or a little bit of polishing on the door handle. I did find this weird switch in the trunk here. Not really sure what it goes to, but I've switched it on and off, and I don't know, it doesn't seem to do anything. So I'm gonna remove the panel here real quick and actually see what it's connected to. Well, it looks like the switch is actually attached to the third brake light. If we look, it goes up into there, and it attaches to the light itself. So, I'm guessing this is not a stock third brake light, but it doesn't seem to do anything when I flip the switch. Maybe I gotta step on the brake and it does something different. All right, so I just did some research on the internet because I was a little bit curious. There are third brake lights that you install on these that have like a rapid fire function so that when you step on the brake light, it will flash a bunch of times before it's solid. And that switch is supposed to be to turn it on and off. So let's give it a try to see if it actually works. Well, I'm gonna leave you guys here. You guys tell me what it does. I got the switch in one position. I'll try the other one in a second. So that's one position, flip the switch. Well, obviously, I already looked at the footage to see what it does. It does do the rapid fire thing. I'm gonna keep that turned on because that's a little bit safer. People are gonna notice the flashing light over just a you know, light that turns on. But the brake lights are also kinda do a little cool thing anyway, so if they didn't notice that, they should at least notice the third brake light. Now, I don't like things just dangling there, so I just cut a little hole and installed the switch. I don't know why they didn't do that before. It only took me like a minute. It's pretty solid, so, ta-da. Well, I figured since I was looking at stuff and was gonna fix things, um, I took the little protective fire retardant cover off of the underneath the hood. As you can tell, they don't paint everything fully, I guess weight savings, we can call it that. But I did find that nothing was wrong down here. So everything is secure. All I basically did is I loosened this up, I bent the flange down and retightened it. It does seem to actually hold it down now compared to how it was before. So we'll call that an easy fix. But I was taking a look at the hood vents and those are some tiny holes. So I feel later on down the road, not today, I do have something going on. I will probably, you know, come in here and try to cut it out a little bit more, maybe to fit the size of this hole so that I could have more heat ventilation through the hood instead of just these two little holes. I know it's supposed to be there to protect it from you know, like rain dripping on stuff, but there's already holes that go down into the engine. All right, now I got the cover back on, you can see. Uh, I think I'm just gonna cut it basically just around where this part is. Uh, all it does is just drip down kind of in this area and the other side kind of in that area. So it already drips in there. Maybe this side does have some electronics on it. Maybe I'll leave that one alone, but this side I'm just gonna cut out because that one just kind of goes there. I don't know. So one thing I did find a little bit funny on here is if we look at the oil cap on here, Mobile One 040. And if we look on the Mobile One website, I found that they don't even show an oil for this car. They do have a 040 for European cars, but when you look specifically for the Camaro, they don't actually offer anything. I don't know. Now in the next video, I'm gonna be taking this car down to the dyno. Right now it's stock, the only thing that's been done to it is the cat back exhaust. And we wanna see what kind of numbers it puts down. I've already taken the Mustang down there, so we'll be able to compare it stock to stock and see which one makes the best power. But according to my butt dyno, it's the Camaro. Hey, if you guys liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. And if you wanna see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I wanna thank you guys for watching and I will see you next video. Hey, run out of gas. Hook me up. Ha 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 ha.